Hey guys, welcome to InventBox, and in this video, I'm going to be explaining to you some of the different ways to render and what the different rendering engines do. So let's get started. Here I have this rendering rendered with Cycles Render. Personally, I like Cycles kind of, it's like, I think, my favorite rendering engine. So this is a very clean and I guess you could say professional looking render. If we hit escape on the keyboard, we'll get out of the render. And you can see the lighting and the setup that I have here. I have our object here. And then right here is your lighting plane. So I just clicked on the plane, went to materials, and changed the surface to emission. I bump the strength up a little bit. And then this is creating a light casting down on it. And that's my favorite way of producing light. It gives it a great even lighting. If I go into rendered view you can see that looks really nice. But one of Blender 2.8's biggest features I think is the EV rendering system. So if we change the rendering engine to EV you'll see something doesn't look right. And what's going on here is EV can't render the lighting planes. Those are just white planes. They aren't actually casting any light. So what we're going to have to do is delete our plane because EV can't use those. We will do shift A and add a point light and then bring it out. Bring it up so it's not quite so bright. Now you can see EV can render this in total real time. If we change this back to cycles real quick you can see how pixely and grainy it gets whenever we move it around. But if we switch it to EV, it's the real-time rendering engine. So you can totally do everything in the rendering engine unless you're needing to use plain lighting or make certain objects use an emission. So this is a really good rendering engine, but it does have its downfalls. There's some things you can't do with it. But there's a lot of ways you can work around it. Just use the point lights instead of the plane lights. And you can work around it. Now, if we want to get rid of the overlays, like if you don't want it to show the grid, you can click on overlays and unselect grid. Now the grids won't be there if that makes it easier to work. Or if you eventually start collecting a lot of point lights and it's just cluttered and you don't want to see them anymore. One way you can just get rid of just the lights click on this and then extras. If you unclick extras then you can see all the lights will disappear, the camera will disappear and now you're just left with your object. And that I think is really nice. I'm really liking the new overlays tab how you can change and adjust all of this. It's super useful I think. So now if we change the rendering engine back to cycles and I will get rid of all of these lights here. Just delete them because I'm going to create another plain light because I really like them. So change this to a mission. Right there. Now we'll scale it up. We hit zero on the numpad and take us to the camera view. You can see the plane is kind of in the way. <laughs> so if we have the plane selected and we're in cycles render Click on the box with the little corner highlights. It's the object settings. Go into cycle settings and check and uncheck the box that says camera. And you'll see that will end up disappearing now and that will be gone. Now you can see it still overlaps on stuff like the grid, which I think is just a subtle detail. It doesn't go on top of stuff but it won't show up in the render but you can still kinda get an idea of where it is since it covers up the grid so <clears throat> now with all the lighting done we can go up here to render output and we can change our resolution the percent 
the default is 50%. So if I render this at 50%, see, we'll go through and render it. And you can see it is pretty grainy of an image. So what we want to do is bump the percent all the way up to 100. So this is going to make the image a little bit bigger, but it's also just going to look a lot cleaner. So if we hit F12, which is the hotkey for render, you can see the image is much bigger now, but it's looking much better. It's less grainy. And if you wanted, of course, you could bump the resolution up to like a 4K, and you could even go as high as you want. It'll let you render in like 18K. There's, there's no point in doing that, but it'll let you if you just put in the numbers. So now you can see the final render here in Cycles Render, which I think gives the most professional final render. I think EV is good for working in the workbench, and then if you want your final render to look really good, I would put it into Cycles. So now if we change this to EV we will go back to our object mode I'll delete the plane and actually give it some good lighting here so if I go into the render view I could put a sunlight eh. um, I don't like the sun I'm going to just do point lights. Bring that up. Side view. And I will copy these. Right there. And then copy these. So now I have some lighting. It looks a little bright. I'll bring them up a little bit more. So it's not quite so washed out. So now with the lights all dragged up a little bit, we can go into our camera view. And if we hit F12, you'll see it'll render almost instantly. And you can see it's more flat. It just doesn't give quite the realness and the really the quality render that I think Cycles gives. Now you can tweak around with the lighting and you might be able to get it to look pretty good. It definitely renders way faster than Cycles. If I hit the render button, it's like an instant render, which is much, much faster than Cycles. So if, you're, if speed is really more important than quality, Eevee works really well. I just like Cycles since I'm not really doing super complicated animations or anything and I think it just looks very professional. So I hope you guys found this video useful and I hope you learned some of the differences between the rendering engines. And I'll see you guys next time.